Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today is the Just Our Imagination uh, challenge where we have three items, challenge items that we have to craft with. This month we had a foil pan from Dollar Tree. Uh, well, we'll get into that in a minute. So our hosts are... Um, Kathy Joe DIYs, Rustic and Lace DIYs, and our guest host is Cindy with Z9 Designs. Anyway, so back to the challenge items that we have. So we have three challenge items, the foil cookie sheet from Dollar Tree, a bowl, and since it is Kathy, uh, Kathy Joe's birthday month, we have to recreate one of her designs. So I'm starting out with the recreation of um, one of Kathy Joe's designs, and I will leave the link to her video in the um, her inspiration video in my description box below. So I'm starting out. Um, I'm taking four wood slices, and as you can see, I'm painting in the middle. Um, black and leaving just a little bit of an outline of the wood. So next I took four paint, uh, paint stir sticks, cut them down. Um, I did not measure. I, I'm taking one out of the Kathy Jo book, right? She forgets to measure too. Uh, <laughs> I did not measure. I just kind of eyeballed what size I wanted it to be and cut the first one and then um, did the rest off of that one uh, cut there. So here I'm gluing them side, uh, side by side. We've got four of them there. I used more than more than four uh, paint stir sticks, but I used four for the, the base, which is what I'm putting together here. And then I used another eight, another eight of them for the slats and everything for the sides. So as you can see, I'm taking and um, took a couple of the jumbo craft sticks and I'm using those. Uh, just to give a little more stability um, to this. I used uh, hot glue and wood glue and then just placed them um, where they were supporting where each of those paint stir sticks um, met or were, yeah, were joined. I don't know words today, y'all. It's been a rough week. My husband's car decided to take a uh yeah decided to take a rest let's just say that so it's been a, a rough week trying to figure out how to get him to work how to get me to work and also trying to figure out what we're going to do with the car since the transmission is dead it's um his mom's wanting us to go ahead and replace the transmission but that requires more time and we don't have a second vehicle because all my uh, extra vehicles are not in tip top shape either so anyway that's what I've been dealing with this week that's why it is three hours before this uh, video is supposed to post and I'm just now doing my voiceover Joy, joy, right? Anyway, so I took and put um, the first set around the edges there. And then I used um, tumbling tower blocks, which you'll see here in a minute. Maybe, if I ever get there. Shh. Voiceovers are, are difficult when I've got a lot on my plate and a lot on my mind. So bear with me, y'all. 
Anyway, so I used um, paint stir sticks in the corners um, to shore this up. Now, if you decide to recreate this, go watch Kathy Joe's video and recreate using her video. Because I royally screwed the pooch on this one. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, but it's something I'm keeping, so it's not a huge deal for me. Um, but if I were to make another one, I, when I was editing this video, I realized exactly where I went wrong. <clears throat> but, uh, so if I decide I want to make one to sell, then I will adjust and, um, with the way I did it. So I took the, the tumbling tower blocks, put them down in each corner. As you can see. Anyway. <laughs> Y'all. Just um, pray for my sanity, will ya? <laughs> Life is, it has been throwing me some uh, relentless curveballs lately. Uh, my sanity might not survive. So pray for my sanity, will ya? Anyway, so now I'm taking and putting the the slat, the second set of slats on there. And here, and that is where I messed up. I put the end ones on first where I should have put the side ones on and then cut the end ones to fit um, properly. So you'll see here in a minute that because I did this this way, there's a gap between the tumbling tower block and the slat. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just trying to get this done because every time I had planned on sitting down through the week working on it, um, I ended up with other stuff going on, having to um, troubleshoot, problem solve, you know, those things that us women have to do all the time. <clears throat> so, it's a little bit on the janky side which once it's complete and I put all the florals and stuff in it you really couldn't tell so it's not a huge deal but like I said if you want to recreate this go watch Kathy Joe's video because she did it right and she's probably funnier to watch than me too she's hilarious but anyway for all of you that you know that continue to watch the content that I put out and support my channel. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means the world to me. Um, for those of you that are new, if you like uh, the content, please like, subscribe, comment, share. It helps, um, helps our channels grow. I will have a link in the playlist or in the description box for the playlist for this collaboration for all of the um, creators videos that participated. Y'all, you gotta you gotta watch this playlist, okay? This is one of the funner um, collaborations and playlists that you know that I've seen because we have to take the oddest items sometimes and figure out how to make a quality project out of it. That's a challenge. And sometimes it's hilarious. But it's also amazing to see what everybody comes up with with these things. It's it, it's amazing. So please, go watch the playlist. I, you won't be bored, I promise. Um, especially with the playlist starts off with Kathy Joe, and she's freaking hilarious. But on that note, since this is her birthday month, we needed, we had to create, um, we had to redo one of hers, or, you know, one of her uh, DIYs. And speaking of birthday months, 
my birthday is in October. My birthday is October 16th. I am trying to hit a thousand subscribers. The last I looked, I think I have 49 more to go to hit a thousand. So I think that is a really, I, I think it's really poss possible to do that by my birthday. And I will be doing a giveaway, which I will speak more about toward the end of the video when I hit a thousand subscribers. Yeah, pardon me, all my allergies, drainage, fun. Anyway, so back to this. I took and used Waverly um, Antique Wax and went all over the whole thing. And then I dry brushed the uh, Waverly Crimson around it to give it that old red barny look. Um, rustic barn type look. Now I'm taking these little circles here. These are going to be the the hub, um, the middle of the hubs on the wheels. Hub caps. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. I was halfway right. And I did the same thing with those. I used the Waverly Antique Wax and dry brush crimson over them. And now I'm gluing them in the middle of each of the wheels. I used uh, wig glue and hot glue. The wig glue's for the permanent hold. The hot glue's for the instant hold. Because let's face it, when you wait till the last possible minute to do this stuff, you ain't got time to wait for glue to dry, right? And look, there's my little helper, Smokey. He's, um, he's something else for sure. It's a good thing he's cute. Because, Lord, let me tell you, I forgot what it was like to have a kitten. He's into everything. He's knocking everything over. Um, several mornings now I have gotten up and gone to my desk and everything that was on my desk is scattered all over my chair and my floor because, well, yeah, he thinks, um, it's fun to get up there and play with whatever caught his fancy. But we love our fur babies, right? And you, you'll, you'll see that, you know, a lot of us in this playlist, we have fur babies, and we love our fur babies. Kathy, Joe, and Brenda, their uh, fur babies are are uh, frequently part of the show. Um, Aria, her uh, her kitty cat is often part of her uh, her show there. So, all right. So here I'm taking and wrapping some twine around the handle and. I don't know why this was so difficult for me. I had to wrap and unwrap and I, I was trying to do a crisscross on there. I don't know what I, I don't know. I don't know. I struggled. It was a struggle bus. <laughs> you would think it would be a simple thing, right? I just could not get it right. And I'm sorry that I made you watch me struggle through it. But when I was editing, I wasn't quite sure where I finally got it right. So, and our videos are supposed to be 30 minutes or less. This one is a little over 35 minutes. I, I cut it down as much as I could. Um, and it's just that wagon was a um, more detailed, a little bit uh, longer project to put together. So here I took a scrap piece of fabric. This is also one of um, Kathy Joe's. It's on the same video as the the, the little wagon. Um, so what I did was I folded it good side in and um, hot glued at the end of it. And I thought I was recording when I did that and I wasn't. And now here I'm just going through and doing a slip stitch. Now, y'all, I can't sew. I don't even know if I did this slip stitch right. And God only knows whether, you know, usually I can get the stitches in there, but eventually the knot that I use it comes untied and it all comes apart or something. 
sewing is not my forte. But a little bit of sewing was necessary with this one. Because you had to have a slip stitch in there to, to draw it. So that's what we did. We'll see if it holds up. Anyway, so I did the slip stitch while on one side of it while it was still turned inside out. And then I flipped it where it was right side um, out. Put a little bit of um, polyfill in there. I've, I've got a pillow from, I think I got it at Dollar General, a cheap pillow from Dollar General. That's cheaper than going and buying the, the polyfill, especially for me because I don't do a lot of projects that require it. So, I mean, this pillow's lasted me a couple years because I don't do a lot of projects that require it. <clears throat> so now I'm doing a slip stitch again. But instead of doing like I did on the, the other side, I had both sides of the material together when I was doing it. This one I'm doing around the, the top. Um, and then I'll draw it up. Yeah, so, and amazingly, I did not shove the needle in my finger at all. That's surprising. Considering the week I've had, I mean, you know, it wouldn't have surprised me to um, poke my finger um, when I was cutting the pieces of, when I was cutting the paint stir sticks. I've got like one of those little mini table saws and I was being like ultra ultra careful make sure my fingers were nowhere near the blade because oh yeah <clears throat> like I said y'all since about July life has thrown so many curveballs my way I I'm I'm beginning to wonder if I if I uh kicked off the universe you know tick somebody off because it's kicking me it is so here I took and um, took a uh, floral foam that's it put some Spanish moss on each side the end and the top uh, and there's there's the little fur baby trying to he was in there trying to steal my flowers. He's been messing with the finished project project all day. I've had to I've had to use the, the squirt bottle several times with him because he's being a stinker. So anyway, I didn't think I made you watch me put all this moss on here. Anyway, I put moss on, on the top and on each end, too, just so that to help camouflage the um, floral foam. I took a stray um, leaf thing that came off of one of the picks, put it up there by my peduncle on my pumpkin, and then um, put a little flower there. I set the pumpkin in the middle and started putting leaves and stuff around it um, through the floral foam. Now, this one, I did not glue down the floral foam because this wagon, um, basically, I can turn around and just lift that floral arrangement out, stick a new um, piece of floral foam in there, and do one for each season slash holiday where I can interchange them. So I did not glue the floral foam down. Now, if you want to recreate the uh, the wagon and you just you just want to use it for fall, by all means, glue it down. You do you. You do this however you, you know, whatever makes you happy and works with your, um, your vibe. I've got a lot of different... Um, 
different fall leaves, you know, d with different color tones and stuff in them. I put a couple of fall florals in there, but I stuck mostly to the leaves. Now, I will probably find something that I can set that pumpkin on that sets it up a little bit higher than the leaves um, and stuff. I just didn't have time before I had to start editing and doing voiceovers and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, if you recreate this and you use the pumpkin part in the middle, just keep in mind to, to either put something under it to lift it up a little bit or, or make something that you can attach it to that lifts it up some. Or you could just fill this completely full of flowers and leaves and not use the pumpkin. Whatever, whatever makes your eyes happy and your heart happy, go with it. This is just inspiration. Um, I love these old, I love the old wagons, the old wheelbarrows, um, the old bikes with the flowers in the baskets, the old trucks. I mean, come on, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I love the old trucks. So, you know, just make the, make it however makes you happy and fits with your decor style. And there we have it. See, by the time it's done, you can't even tell that the, the wagon is wonky. All right, so we had some miscommunication when um, they were doing the challenge items. Um, I guess Kathy, Kathy Jo is the one that picked the bowl. And evidently she had said plastic bowl, but somewhere in there, it only got put in there as a bowl. So I had already gotten the glass bowl and there were others that, you know, so we went with it. We're all good. We're a good group of people. We just kind of go with it. <laughs> That's what us crafters do, right? We go with it. We don't nitpick because somebody, um, misunderstood or, or forgot something or whatever. So I took one of the, the fish bowl types, that, um, bowls from Dollar Tree, painted it black, and then I went and dabbed on black. And I had meant to go back over it with some um, dabbing or dry brushing some gray paint on there, and I just totally spaced it. So now I'm taking one of the things at the Dollar Tree Fairy Lights and a, I think it's a three inch wooden disc. Might, might be four inch. I don't know. Um, and I'm, I'm hot gluing those, at least a couple of them down on that disc. And that disc was a perfect size to fit on top of that, um, that bowl. Unfortunately, in doing this, yes, the hot glue provides an instant hold, but it still takes a few minutes for it to set where something doesn't come popping up off of it. So now I've got like a whole coffee can full of these silver and white uh, table scatter balls from Dollar Tree. I'm using just the white ones, and I'm starting to glue those around um, on this disc. And if you've gotten that table scatter before, then you know that it has like three different size of this little um, little balls. I didn't make you watch. I'm not making you watch me glue every one of those on there because this video's already five minutes past the time, the 30 minute limit. So, um, but I took in, I did the one layer of the, the little foam balls, glued them in there. And then I took and wrapped some more of the, the lights through there, intertwined them and glued them down and, and so on and so forth. 
It's kind of a layering process between the lights and the styrofoam balls. And as you can see here, I turn the lights on. <clears throat> and that's me just kind of wrapping them through there and finding where I was going to bend it under because the, um, the battery pack is going to go inside the bowl. And here I'm just taking some of the little ones, um, some of the small ones, some of the bigger ones. I'm filling in the gaps where you can see the, the light strings. All right, now we're on to DIY number three. And with that, cal with, with that cauldron, I still feel like it's missing something. I know I forgot to, to go in and dry brush the gray paint on it, but I still feel like it's missing something. If you have suggestions, put them in the uh, comments. I just couldn't wrap my brain around what it was missing. Um, at first, I was thinking about painting all of those purple or green. I decided to leave them white because I liked the way the little sparkles showed with the lights because they're little glitter balls. So anyway, this one here, um, I took one of the Dollar Tree signs um, in the shape of a mason jar. I mixed some hazelnut crimson and a little bit of the Waverly um, antique wax to get that base coat color to make it kind of look like tea. It's I'm still not 100% happy with the, the color, but it was the closest I could get without wasting a ton of paint. And I took and painted the handle white um, and I don't know why I painted up at the top white because I cover it up. But anyway, that that's, you know. So I painted the handle white, let it dry, and then took and um, also took this round, uh, seven inch round from Walmart. I painted it white. What I'm doing is making a sign for our painted tree booth and we're sweet tea and butterflies. So a glass of sweet tea, right? <laughs> I've been needing to make this sign since we got in there in March. Okay. Does that give you any indication? So then I took, um, some of the Waverly, um, silver glittery and put it over the, the white on the handle to kind of make it look more like glass instead of just the white handle. And let's see. And I had to, my, my little straw thing, you probably noticed earlier in the video that it was missing that little straw piece that was sticking up there. Um, I know that most of the creators I see crafting with these, you cut the handle and the straw piece off or cut the straw piece off. The straw piece was essential, so I left it on there. Well, I had to reattach it because it came off. Um, but anyway, I took um, also with the this round it's got like a beveled edge. So I took some of this, um, is it lilac mist? I think it's lilac mist and went around that edge. And now I'm painting the butterfly. And I'm painting it in the, the lilac mist as well. I used a little bit of black for the middle of the body there. And what? what I did here. Uh, oh, okay. You'll see in a minute. I don't know what the heck I, I had to shift it because I was painting off screen. 
I mixed um, bright yellow, I think it is. Let me see. Yeah, bright yellow with a little bit of uh, Waverly white <clears throat> to paint the straw with. Because our colors are like a purple. Our, our main colors are purple, yellow, purple and yellow or lavender, you know. Yeah, purple, lavender, yellow, and a light green are our colors, um, our brand colors. So I don't have any of the green in here, but I do have the yellows and the purples. So I took and put some Mod Podge on here. And I'm off screen again. What the heck? Boy, I really wasn't paying attention, was I? But also, you could see where I had taken and, and painted to make it look like there were some ice cubes in the, um, in the glass. And here's where the third challenge item comes in. That aluminum cookie sheet. And that's going to be the top of my, the lid of my jar. Boy, my editing skills today are just, uh, leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> right now, I'm just thankful that I've got my, uh, that I've got it almost done. I'm done with this voiceover, I'll be done. Oh, yeah, there was my little uh, helper again. Shiny foil. It, it makes noise, it's shiny, it's everything a cat could love, right? As I was trimming that off there, he was looking like, ooh, ooh, it's a toy for me. So I hot glued that down, and then I just took and um, kind of melded the edges around the top part of the thing there. I think I eventually grabbed a popsicle stick and kind of used it also to kind of rub and, and meld it in there. Yep, I did. <clears throat> Pardon me. I think I glued the butterfly on there off camera. I, there were several points in this that I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Then there were others that as I was editing, I found that my camera kicked back on and was recording when I didn't need it recording. I took um, some twine and ran it along that bottom edge. You know, because oftentimes you'll find mason jars or whatever that have, like, either fabric or twine or whatever around it, you know, just for decoration. So that's what I did. Waiting for the glue to set so I can cut it. And then I did a little shoelace bow to put on there. And voila, cut it, and then I, that one tail was just being unruly. I was like, okay, I'll cut it shorter. There we go. <laughs> All right, and I had decoupaged our logo onto that uh, wood round from Walmart. And here I just cut off the excess so that I could... Um, sand off the edges there. Oh, well. Yeah. So, y'all have decoupaged before. You know, you put a coat on top and then you sand off the edges. All that good stuff. I think I uh, cut that part out because it's redundant um, for the sake of shortening the video. 
I took two tumbling tower blocks, put them in there because I wanted that to be lifted up just a little bit. And there you have it. So I was gifted a bunch of free um, craft supplies. I have my pick of everything that was in this shed. Um, I obviously did not get all of it. I don't have room for all of it. But my giveaway, uh, when I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to share a um, mix box, surprise box um, with the winner. So that will be the giveaway. And here we are with the final reveal. So help me get to that 500 by my, or that thousand by my birthday. That would be really awesome. And I think it's a goal that's very possible to, to reach. So thank you all for your support and thanks for watching. Have a great day.